The subscapularis muscle is the most neglected rotator cuff muscle that needs just as much attention as the other three. Unfortunately, when it is targeted, there are two common mistakes that lead to poor results. Watch this video to learn how to properly exercise the subscapularis for decreased pain and increased strength and range of motion. Coach E here from Precision Movement, and we are back with a video today targeting the subscapularis, which is one of the rotator cuff muscles. It's the only one that does internal rotation, and it's a muscle that's often neglected. And when it is trained, it's trained without a couple of really, really important cues to get it working effectively. Now, if you are like me and you have a soft spot in your heart for the neglected and undervalued muscles of the body, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell, so we can give those muscle, muscles the attention and the love that they deserve. Today, we're gonna go a little bit into the background and our approach as to why we choose the exercises that we do, but we're gonna publish another video with Dr. B talking more about surgery and other considerations if you've got a severe amount of pain or you've already been diagnosed with a tear. So you can click that video when it's ready. It'll be linked up there and in the description down below. But we do have to cover a little bit of background so you understand at least a little bit about the why behind the what. So first, let's start with the anatomy. The subscapularis is part of what's known as the rotator cuff group of muscles, and that's the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Now, with the name rotator, we often think internal, external rotation. Internal rotation is like this. External rotation is like this. Likewise, internal rotation is like that, whereas external rotation is like that. However, the rotator cuff is more important for dynamic stability of the head of the humerus or of the shoulder joint. It keeps that head of the humerus centered in the socket as you move around. And when you lose that centration, you run into problems like impingement, rotator cuff tendonitis, and all the different shoulder pathologies that you can be diagnosed with. Now the subscapularis itself is the biggest rotator cuff muscle, so that's important. If it's big, it's there, and it probably needs to be doing something and needs to be trained just like the others. And it's the only one that does internal rotation of the shoulder. So it's the only one that provides stabilization in that motion. Now with respect to other internal rotators and synergists of the subscapularis, you're looking at the pec major, which is a very strong muscle in a lot of people, especially those who were raised on a diet heavy in bench press when they were kids like me. And we've got the teres major, another muscle that likes to work. It's one of the super, another superficial muscle like the pec major, and to a lesser extent, the anterior deltoid. So that's a really quick rundown of the anatomy of the shoulder and the subscapularis. Now, what are the two big mistakes that I hinted to in the title and in the intro of this video? Number one is that when you think of the rotator cuff and the subscapularis, you immediately go to internal rotation. So you think, okay, we're gonna train those exercises that do that and that mimic the movements that you'd see in sport, like throwing a fastball or a serve in tennis, where the shoulder does internal rotation. However, as I mentioned already, the subscapularis and the rotator cuff as a whole must provide stability throughout the range of motion more to maintain centration of the head of the humerus in the joint as opposed to providing internal rotation force. The second big mistake that I found with subscapularis exercises and rehab strategies that I've seen elsewhere is that there's little to no mention of the importance of posterior tilt of the scapula. So my scapula is right here, posterior tilt is like that, and concurrent activation of the serratus anterior muscle. The serratus anterior, if you look at the anatomy right here, it's a posterior tilter of the scapula, but it provides stability to the scapula so that the other muscles that work on the scapula and that are attached to the scapula have a stable foundation from which to work. If the scapula is not stable, you're not gonna get the most out of any rotator cuff exercises that you do, internal or external rotation. To illustrate this phenomenon, I found a really great article on post-surgical rehab in the International Journal of Sports Physical Therapy. And in this article, they provide a multi-phase approach from post-surgery, immediate post-surgery to return to sport. And there's only one mention of the serratus anterior muscle 
and no mention of the movement of posterior tilt. So this is something that if you were to take just one thing away from this video is the need of posterior tilt and stability of the scapula done by the serratus anterior for all rotator cuff training that you do. All right, now we're gonna get into the exercises to get your subscapularis functioning properly and strong. And I'm gonna talk about my approach as we go so you understand why each exercise has been chosen. First up, we're gonna do the wall pec stretch. And if you've followed our channel for a while, you know that we're not big on stretching. However, I usually say there's a time and place for it. And in this case, it's beneficial because we're not gonna stretch the subscapularis, we're gonna stretch the pectoralis major, which is a synergist for the subscapularis in terms of internal rotation. And we're gonna stretch it so we can shut it off so that when we get to the exercises, it's not overworking and dominating, allowing the subscapularis to do its thing. For this, we're just gonna lift the arm up on a wall, hand on the wall, at about shoulder level or just above shoulder level, depending on how your shoulder is feeling right now. And from there, you're just gonna rotate away from the wall. And your goal is to stretch out the pec major right here. So once you feel that stretch, and you can typically be a little bit aggressive with it because it's very strong. Once you're in that position, deep breaths, deep, slow breaths. So you're gonna inhale and expand that rib cage, which is gonna give you a little more stretch and then slow exhale, which is gonna help you to relax and deepen the stretch. So you keep breathing deep as you're holding that for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, doing two reps per side. And again, that's not to stretch the subscapularis, it's to stretch one of the synergists, the pec major. Next up, we're gonna to get to the teres major, active self myofascial release for the teres major. And for this, you need a massage ball and you're gonna place it right under this area. It's kind of below the armpit and from the armpit back a few inches. The teres major, it's another synergist, it does internal rotation and if we can shut that off, when we do exercises that do internal rotation, we can hope that the subscapularis is the one that's doing most of it. So for this exercise, place the ball on the wall, get into that area, lean into that area, and it can be very tender, especially if you do a lot of pull-ups and chin-ups. Once you're on that area, you're gonna start with your arm on the wall, and then just kind of roll as you horizontally flex the shoulder. And then I'm gonna reset, get the arm on the wall, get a slightly different position, and then roll, rotate away from the wall as you horizontally extend or flex the shoulder. So bring the hand towards the shoulder. And you keep doing that in different areas for about a minute. It's not a huge muscle, so you don't need to spend too much time on it to cover it, but do it for about a minute. Make sure you're relaxed and breathing. That muscle is not contracted. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to release it. And that's how you release the teres major. And again, that's going to shut it off so that we can get the subscapularis working, which is what we're going to do right now with the three-way subscapularis isometric. So the first way we're going to do it is with our hand on our belly. And this it allows us to get good subscapularis activation in a position that's very safe for the shoulder, this neutral position. So if you've got pain or a suspected injury, this is an exercise that you would start off with because it's very, very safe. So you're gonna start there and you're just gonna either press into the belly or you can press into your hand, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> the key is, as I mentioned earlier, proper alignment of the scapula with a little bit of posterior tilt to get that serratus anterior activated. Again, if you don't know how to do that or your serratus anterior is very weak or you just don't know how to connect to it, check out the video up there because that's what you need first before getting to subscapularis exercises. So getting in good posture and through the spine and a little bit of posterior tilt of the scapula, I'm just gonna ramp up my activation, keeping the shoulder where it is. So my shoulder is slightly back and holding for five to 10 seconds as I'm breathing naturally, and then just ramp it down. And again, reset, good spine posture, good shoulder position, good scapular position. So I get that serratus anterior on first, and then I press into the hand or belly, 
activating the subscapularis, breathing naturally, maintaining good posture and alignment, and then ramp it down. If you need to, you can just shake it out in between. And to repeat that for two to four reps, five to 10 seconds hold. So if you're good in this position, the next position you wanna to get to is arm on the shoulder, elbow and arm parallel to the ground. So right here, arms up, and all I'm doing is the same thing. I'm gonna press down with good alignment, with a bit of posterior tilt, holding for five to 10 seconds, breathing naturally, keeping that posture, keeping that shoulder position, and then ramp it down. Then you can relax the shoulder, relax the arm, and then bring it back up, reset your alignment, posterior tilt to the scapula, shoulders pulled back, and you can think of sucking the arm into the shoulder joint here a little bit, and then ramp up the activation. Don't go from zero to 100 in an instant. Just ramp it up gradually to as the max safest level you can. Hold it there. Breathing naturally, maintaining your posture and your positioning, and then you ramp it down. So that's the second way, second position. Then the third position is the hardest position. It's with your hand behind your back. So the hand in the small of the back here, in your low back, your lumbar spine area, this is the toughest position because a lot of times the shoulder can lack internal rotation, especially on your dominant side, if you throw or if you play a sport like tennis, you can lack internal rotation here. <clears throat> so you might not even wanna do this one, you just stick to the other two positions for now until your range increases. But if you can do it, the key is you have to have good shoulder positioning and anterior, uh, posterior tilt of the scapula, apologies. So that serratus anterior is activated, You'll know if your shoulder blade is just winging off of your rib cage, there's a lot of space in between your shoulder blade and your rib cage, then this might not be the position for you. But if you can keep that shoulder blade relatively flush to the rib cage, then you can do this and you can keep this shoulder back. So if you're looking like this, don't do it. If you're looking more like this, then do it. The exercise is lifting the hand off of the low back. So I'm just rotating it up. So I've got some space between my hand and my low back, maintaining that posture, <clears throat> not hiking the shoulder up, keeping the shoulder down in good positioning, posterior tilt of the scapula, holding five to 10 seconds, and then relax everything. And you repeat that for two to four reps. So what you could do is start with just the belly, do one to two sessions of that, and then you can add in the shoulder, do one to two sessions, then you could add in the low back, and you could cycle through all three. So in one set, you could do belly, five to 10 seconds, shoulder, five to 10 seconds, low back, five to 10 seconds, and that's one cycle. So instead of doing reps, you're doing cycles of the three positions and still do two to four cycles. That way you're gonna build your endurance in these different positions and you'll have a subscap that can work wherever you're gonna put your arm. The fourth exercise is one that I've come up with to start to train the alignment and stabilization function, dynamic stabilization function of the rotator cuff. And this is the shoulder circle with 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So your elbows in this position, 90 degrees. I like to start this off on the ground because that gives you good feedback of your scapular positioning. You can feel it. So you set it, you get that posterior tilt, keep the shoulder down towards the floor so it's not rounded forward off the floor. So your shoulder's down on the floor. And now you know, okay, my shoulder blade's in good position here and we do the exercise from here. What you're gonna do is go from that belly position, we're gonna go and circle in one direction first, and you're just gonna circle the shoulder, keeping the elbow at 90 degrees, maintaining scapular positioning. That's the most important point here. Just maintaining that scapular positioning, circling, if you could picture drawing a circle with your elbow, you've got a crayon on your elbow, and you're drawing a big circle, going nice and slow and under control, maintaining positioning of the shoulder joint. That's the key here. So we're training that rotator cuff in its most important function, which is dynamic stabilization. You can go in both directions. So do three to five circles in one direction, and then three to five circles in the other direction. You might find one harder than the other. Go nice and slow and work that stabilization function. So that, the key is 
understanding where your shoulder is supposed to be, and then maintaining that positioning throughout the exercise. You can do two to three sets, three to five circles per direction. Then when you're ready to progress that, we can actually add load to that same exercise to work and strengthen the muscles through this movement pattern, which is basically taking the shoulder through a pretty wide range of motion. So we can add resistance using a band, and we set up the band at about maybe two feet above the ground, and then that's gonna target the subscapularis because we're resisting external rotation, so the internal rotators, the subscap, has to work. We could also use a dumbbell, and that's gonna train us when our shoulder is in external rotation. And we can do both if you wanna get really fancy. That way you're gonna get the subscap working when the arm and the shoulder is in external rotation and internal rotation. So that way you're gonna develop strength through the full range. So that's the shoulder circle and progress up from the unloaded to at least one of the loaded variations. Finally, a good exercise for integrating the subscap into a compound movement pattern is the push-up plus exercise. Now the push-up plus, it's often talked about for serratus anterior, but it's also good for getting the subscapularis. There's just a couple of things. First, let me show you the push-up plus exercise. It's basically a push-up just at the top. You ensure you get full protraction of the scapula. So you're pushing yourself away from the floor and your shoulder blades are moving away from each other at the top. As you go down, your shoulder blades come together, closer together. As you go up, your shoulder blades move apart. Now, one thing that you can do with this to increase the subscap activation is focus on internal rotation on your hands. So if you think, look down at your hands, they're gonna rotate internally. They're gonna rotate in towards each other. They're not gonna move, but that's the force and that's the activation pattern that you're using throughout the push-up plus exercise. So it's constant internal rotation, the hands don't actually move, but that's gonna increase your recruitment of the subscap when you're doing the push-up plus, which already activates the subscap. This will just increase the activation that you get there. So with the push-up plus, whatever variation you use, do two to four sets, up to 10 reps, just go slow and under control, and that's gonna help to build strength in a movement pattern that you're gonna use in everyday life and sport, and have the subscapularis contributing to maintaining your stable shoulders throughout that. So those are the five exercises and some variations of exercises that can target your subscapularis, one of those neglected muscles that we need to spend a little more time on to ensure that our body continues to do what we want it to do. It allows us to play the sports that we wanna play in, just live life moving freely and without pain. So hope you, hopefully you enjoyed that video and you found it beneficial and you learned something from it. If you did, hit us up with a like, make sure you're subscribed so we can keep hitting those neglected muscles and some links, further resources for you. We've got the video that I mentioned earlier if it's available, here it is with Dr. B, giving you more background and more surgical and medical information. We've got the serratus anterior video, and we've got our shoulder pain solution, which takes this approach to the next level over multiple phases, 30 or 40 plus exercises to ensure your shoulders are strong, stable, and mobile. So check that out if you've got any shoulder pain. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep moving.